Hello, Morning Rush Regulars. Thank God it's Friday. This is Jonathan Rush. This is Kelly Nash. Good morning. So we're heading into the weekend. We're doing the Tomorrow's Show Today podcast. Monday show today is what we're going to be talking about. So you can chime in Monday morning. And remember, if there are things that you see on the internet or in your neighborhood, even better, or in your relationship, even better, then you can always reach out to us and say, hey, why don't you guys talk about this? Something perplexing you? We can try to iron it out. Mm -hmm. And we're heading into the weekend. It's going to get colder. My wife is very excited about that. She can actually wear some of the winter clothing she bought. I know women in particular are getting excited about some of the gifts they got for Christmas or some of the wardrobe choices they made back in November. It's been hot ever since, so now they can get all geared up for the weekend. But we also have game pop. Uh, basketball tomorrow. It's away, so we all get to watch it on television. It starts at 1 o'clock. Okay. Clemson fans, your game starts at 2. And you're back over for a no, another dose of butt whipping at North Carolina State. Good luck to you. So we got that coming down. And then after all the oh, and then the NFL playoffs on Sunday. Oh, it's gonna be a good weekend. Yeah, it's a big weekend. And then after all that, then we got to drag back into work on Monday morning. But that's when we need your help, in particular at a little after six, because we got a moral dilemma. What's the problem? All right. So imagine the scenario: twenty, I don't know, be about seventeen years ago, you decided to adopt a little baby girl. Okay. All right, and you've decided. For whatever reason, you don't want to tell her she's been adopted. You don't know anything about DNA testing coming down the pike. Oh. Well, here it is. The girl's now a senior in high school. And one of the class projects is they're all going to do a, fa a fun DNA test. Oh, yeah. And send it off and, and learn more about what parts of the world their family's from and so on and sure. so forth. Now, this mom is very afraid that if she does do the DNA test that it's going to be revealed. Well, you don't match up with your mom at all. So... What about that? So <laughs> that's should, a great show and tale. Yeah, should she just tell her the truth before the thing comes out? Oh, the cat's out of the bag. Well, ha she hasn't taken the test yet. Oh. Uh, there's also the option, my option, if you've decided to not tell her, then you can just say no. We're not. We're not sending off our DNA into any of these types of things. We're not doing that. We're not sharing it. We're not going to be a part of. It. My, I, there's a lot of people who have legitimate concerns about DNA. Uh, testing in the sense that it reveals so much about you and it's permanently stored somewhere so I, she could just say I'm one of those That's people true. I yeah. don't want our DNA enough in intrusion sort of, into our family life yeah so she could do it that way yeah. or like I said just come clean or the third option I guess is just let it happen and see if somebody decides to try to put it together now there's always that possibility that nobody would know I don't think the mom's taking the DNA test how are they gonna know good point hmm where do you fall down on that one? Well, maybe I should you know, fall down anyway. Where do you uh, where do you stand on that one? Because you're right. You now you got to have, but wouldn't this be the perfect opportunity to have the conversation? I, I I'm not in the, the the mom's head. I don't know why she never wanted her to know that she had That's adopted true. her. Um, but whatever that is, yeah. is apparently a big deal still. Mm -hmm. So she's, uh, you know, I, again, honesty is the best policy. I think you should have come clean years ago I think you should come clean now but if you don't want to there I think there are ways to beat the system here without being well, too uh, devious yeah and we've had a lot of families that have taken in adopted children you can, we can probably get some great insight if you tell them too early or how do they respond you, you got a perfect day you kind of recommend it okay good we have several conversations out of that mm -hmm. all right so we're doing that moral dilemma Monday and then we got several different things we could choose from yeah, we've got uh, Kylie Jenner launching her own convention mm -hmm. in her own honor. Mm -hmm. And like, when, is, when is Kelly Con happening? When is what's Rush Con, Weed Con? When are we going to have our own conventions? These people really think a lot of themselves, don't they? She's a touch self absorbed. Is Kelly Con coming? Is it going to come near here, by the way? Is it, it a traveling to, right? show? No, or? Well, take it on the road. Yeah. I do like the CDC report revealing how lazy Americans are. And specifically how lazy South Carolinians are. And Jonathan, I think you're going to have a, a small sense of pride here. Uh, there are seven states and two U.S. US territories where 30% or more of the population say they do no physical activity. Well, not, not because they're crippled or anything. They, can, they, can, they have full faculties. They just choose to not do anything. They, they go to work. Yeah. You know, they shower and clean themselves. But the question that was asked by the CDC is, during the past month, 
other than your regular job, did you participate in any physical activities or exercises such as running, calisthenics, stretching, golfing, gardening, walking, anything for exercise? Have you done anything? anything? Again, how many, what percentage of people said no? In the last month, I've done nothing. And it wasn't because they broke their leg or anything like that. It's right. just, they were fine. They just chose that I'm not going to do anything. Uh, I was surprised at how high it is, to be honest with you. In these seven states, which are basically the SEC. Oh, my God. Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina. Tennessee, Oklahoma, yeah. uh, Alabama, <laughs> Kentucky, Arkansas, Mississippi. Uh, over 30% of the population has done what? nothing. Nothing! They didn't even walk around the block. They roll out of bed, they go to the work. Do they cut their grass? Stop they by walk Walmart. to the mailbox? Well, see, no, I think that that would be considered what part of the bare minimum of staying alive. Okay. Right? Like, they do walk to a restaurant, they <laughs> do walk God. to mow the lawn, they do walk to do whatever. Yeah. But they're not going to do anything extra. I saw a couple coming out of, uh, I forgot which store it was, but they were in the riding carts, you know, for handicaps. And the... The guy comes out first, and he almost runs over me. That's why I noticed him. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> and then he yells back. He, uh, I thought he was yelling at me. Is the battery going to last? And his wife apparently is following him in another one of the ride-along carts. And she complains, no, the batteries are about to get out, give out. So she gets out of the cart, picks up her three little bags of groceries out of the basket, and I turn to watch her walk to her car. She could walk. She just chose to ride around with the groceries. This is how lazy we're becoming. Yeah. It's like in the movie Wall-E, if you saw that. That's what we're becoming a bunch of Wallies. We're just living in Wally world over here where we don't live to do anything physical. So in South Carolina, though, I thought you'd have a small sense of pride that we are not one of those states. Oh, thank God. 27.2% of South Carolinians answered the answer no. 27. Yeah, so more than a quarter of A us. quarter of a population. One in, one in four people. A quarter of our population. They go to work. They pull into the carport as far as possible. <laughs> they walk to the door inside and fall down on the sofa. Now, I have had days where I needed to take a nap on the couch before I could get upstairs to go to bed. Okay. Like I just walked out. I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. <sighs> and then an hour or two later, I wake up and I go upstairs and go right to bed. I always laughed at myself like that. Like, how miserable of a human being or you need to take a nap in order to go to bed but uh, that's not part of my regular routine and i would imagine i don't know it would seem like that it actually would become a burden on you if you didn't have any physical activity so if i took this test if they asked me the question and i described it to them instead of just answering the question i say you know something i'm always i'm outside i'm working in the yard yeah you're i doing stay more. outside a lot i'm yeah. cutting the grass sure you, and know, you walk the dogs I do walk the dogs walk yeah. around the block okay. you have physical activity but sally likes going to work out i don't like to go work out i'd rather well, go outside and work okay do you do you do anything like walking or yeah. gardening yeah. or anything so i'm, I'm a, <laughs> Okay, I'm part of the 75% almost of South Carolinians that are at least doing something. That, but it doesn't, or does it surprise you? I'm, I'm sure we all know people like that. They just come home and fall down. How would I meet them? Well, you're right. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't meet you. You, you wouldn't not, know. I'm not going to meet you at the golf course. I'm not going to meet you playing tennis. I'm not going to meet you at the gym. I don't know where to meet these people. And I don't, I would, because I have been physically inactive other than like just the bare yeah. minimums. And I remember being miserable, just hated my life, like because you you feel horrible. There's I don't know. There's just something about you got it. You're built to move. Well, but I know you play golf with people who plainly are breaking the grounds rules with how car, how close they drive the cart to the green, <laughs> and you know they pull off the path right up next to the sure. to the tee box, and I'm like, yeah, really? You're not supposed to be doing that. But at least their swing. Their swing is, I mean, it's like chopping wood, right? And, and those types of guys usually have to take a lot of swings to get to a round of golf. You're right, you're right. They're <laughs> getting an extra swing. And they always want a mulligan or five. Exactly. So, okay, okay, good. Exactly. Um, we do have another story up here about, um, uh, where did it go? This one. Researchers discover the age when people are most miserable. And we were talking to Tumbleweed about this off the air. For Tumbleweed, it would have been... Uh, January 2011, November. 
November, right? Is that what we figured yeah, out? Yeah, November. Okay. Because the age that you'll be most miserable at is 47 years old and two months. That's the worst month of anyone's life, <laughs> according to research. we got people right now who are 47 and doing the math, or 46 and they're doing the math. I'm about to come up on my, the worst miserable month of my life is coming. Well, apparently middle age is also one of the roughest times in life for, for people traditionally. And they, the, the researchers list middle age as 40 to 59. When you get through middle age, as you get into your late 50s and early 60s, okay. and obviously your 70s and 80s, you have other issues, maybe more health issues and things. But you, I guess the way the researchers, what they've discovered is that people feel more um, comfortable. They have more knowledge. They understand what they're doing better, where people in their 40s and 50s sometimes can feel overwhelmed. They've got college uh, debt maybe of their own still that they're dealing with as well as their kids and all this other stuff right um, but you're also I'll just read it to what they what they said loneliness anxiety despair panic phobias uh, restless nights of sleep losing confidence in yourself uh, feeling like you're constantly under strain you feel like a failure you feel like you've missed out on life these are the feelings of somebody in their mid 40s, early 50s. Wow. Traditionally, this is when it's going to be the hardest for you. Uh, but for me, life has been going great for me. I got married when I was 49, um, 52 now. Life just feels pretty good. Even when, in 47, I was single. Uh, and they say that if you're uh, single or separated, that you're, it's even worse for you at that time. But I don't remember feeling that way. I, I had a lot of. Now, for me, my worst year, I don't know the month per se. But 17 years of age, I did. I was not a happy teenager because I rec I knew I wasn't very smart, <laughs> and I knew that I had to get a real job real soon. Like life was coming at me, and I felt all that anxiety of the real world is coming. I'm not ready for it. I don't want to have to get out there and try to figure out how to make car payments, insurance payments, uh, you know, house payments or apartment payments feed myself, buy my own clothes. It was just so overwhelming at 17 for me. And uh, so I've been pretty, I've been on an upward tr slide, I'd say, since I was like a teenager. I'm, 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 you know what it is? I'm, I don't overthink it. That must be what it is. All right. I'm blissfully happy. All right. I, I don't overthink it. I'm thinking back on my life. When was the worst time of my life? I, I don't, I can't point to a year. I can't even point to an era. Really? No. You've never had a bad month, week, year. Oh, I've decade. had bad. I've had a bad <laughs> week. Frustrating and all that. But if you look back at, look back at it and go, I don't think I ever. I don't see. This is what a simple. This is how good it is to be a simpleton. You don't overthink it. I don't overthink it. I've been in a good mood pretty much since I was born. <laughs> I've been I'm, now. Now I'm fearful. We, what happens if next week everything falls to hell in a handbasket? How bad is this going to be? You had it coming. Yeah, the pendulum, <laughs> the pendulum's been swinging for a long time. You know they say it's the further it swings back, the harder it's going to hit you. Well, tune in next week and let's find out how everything goes to hell. This would be great. <laughs> this would be great. I should keep a reality television crew on standby. Look, things are really starting to look a little difficult. Yeah, this is going to be hard. Yeah, okay. come on over and set up. <laughs> All right, well, maybe you agree or disagree with uh, the 47 in two months, or what was your roughest year in your life, or or you like me, just blissfully ignorant and happy as hell. What, what, do, you, what do you say? <laughs> we'll talk about that Monday on The Morning Rush.